Having a basic understanding of the various foundation we have when it comes to pants making is very vital when it comes to getting the desired fit for yourself as well as for your client. So there are four different foundations when it comes to pant. We have the clot. So the clot is a pant that looks more like a skirt. The clot foundation is created using an airline skirt pattern. Okay, so the cloth foundation is very, very loose fitted and that is why it looks more like a skirt. The second foundation we have is the trouser. So generally speaking, every pant is referred to as a trouser. I guess this is where the confusion comes into play. Okay, so the trouser is a pant it fits nicely, but it's also very loose fitted, but not as loose fitted as the cloth. Okay, what makes the trouser loose fitted is the fact that it has a long crutch front extension as well as a long back crutch extension. The third foundation we have is the slack. So the slack is just right in the middle. It is not too loose. It is not too tight. The difference between the slack and the trouser is that the front extension of the slack is shorter than the trouser. Then the finer foundation we have, which is what I'll be showing you the pattern today, is the jeans foundation. So the jeans foundation is a very close fitted um, kind of pant. So you can choose to go for a very contoured jeans pant or you can go for a very relaxed jeans pant. So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to achieve all this. Okay. Um, what makes the jeans foundation really close fitted is as a result of the short front crotch extension, as well as the short back crotch extension. So without further ado, let's start drafting. I started by drawing a horizontal line one inch below the top of my pattern paper. This line is the waistline. Now from the side, I came into inches and I square across a vertical line. Now from the waistline, I'm going to mark down the full length of my pant that reaches to the floor. So this measurement you want to take from the side, okay? All vertical measurements should be taken from the side. Next, I added one and a half inches for M allowance. From the waistline, I'm going to mark down the distance from my waist to my hip and square a horizontal line. This is the hip line. Now from the waistline, I'm going to mark down my crotch depth plus half of an inch for ease. This line becomes the crotch level line. Now from the waistline, I'm going to mark the distance from my waist to my knee. This is 23 inches. And then I'm going to square across a horizontal line. This line is the knee line. Now from the side, I'm going to mark my front hip measurement is my hip circumference divided by four minus quarter of an inch. So I'm subtracting quarter of an inch because we are fuller at the back than we are at the front. So this quarter of an inch that I subtracted from the front, I'm going to add it to the back hip measurement. Okay, now I'm going to mark this figure on the waistline and mark this figure also on the crotch line. Or you can just go ahead and Divide your hip circumference into four. This is totally optional. Next, I'm going to connect both points together like so. Now from the side on the crotch line, I'm going to mark in half of an inch. From this point, I'm going to mark my thigh circumference divided by two. Now this extension after the vertical line should measure at least one and three quarter inches to two inches at most. If it's not up to this, you need to adjust this line to be either one three quarter or two inches. Now from this point on the waistline, I'm going to mark in half of an inch and connect this point to the hip line like so. From this point, I'm going to square out a diagonal line and along this diagonal line, I'm going to mark out one and one eighth inches to one and quarter inches and then using my french curve i'm going to connect this point like so 
Now from this point on the waistline, I'm going to mark my front waist measurement, which is the waist circumference divided by four plus quarter of an inch. Now I'm adding quarter of an inch because we are more fuller at the front than at the back of our waist. So you want to mark your front waist measurement plus your dart width. Next, I'm going to connect these three points to form the side seam of the pants. Next, you want to take the measurement from these two points and mark the midpoint. Now, square a vertical line right across this point from the top to the bottom, making sure this line is on a 90 degree angle. The leg line design for this pant is a straight pant. So just like we do when drafting a straight skirt, where you have to take your hip width and place it on the knee line as well as on the M line, this is exactly what we're going to be doing here. Just a little twist, okay? So I'm going to take my hip circumference and divide it into four. And the twist here is that I'm going to subtract half of an inch from this measurement. So my hip divided into four is 10 and half. Then once I subtract half of an inch, that gives me 10. So this then I'm going to divide equally on both sides of the vertical line on the knee line. Next for the M line, I'm going to add one inch to the knee width. So this makes it 11 inches. This 11 inches, I'm going to divide it equally on both sides of the vertical line on the M line. Next, using a straight ruler, I'm going to connect these points together. Now, using a pen curve ruler, I'm going to connect from the crotch to the knee, like so. Do take note of how I position the curve. On the center line of the pen, I'm going to mark down my dart length of three and a half inches. This is basic, but you can make your dart longer if you want to. And then on both sides of this vertical line, I'm going to mark my dart width of three quarter of an inch. Next, we need to take the front crutch length measurement. This measurement is very important if you want your pant to sit really, really well on you. So taking this measurement on your body is a bit tricky, but this was what I did. So I placed a pin on the seam under my crutch. And from this point, I measure to my waist at center front like so and this is giving me approximately 12 and quarter inches next i took my tape over my crotch like so and measure to the center back of my waist and up to the center front of my waist as well so this is a total crotch length okay now to get your back crotch length all you need to do is to subtract your front crotch length from the total crotch length okay now I'm going to measure my pattern and compare it with the measurements I just got from my body. And this is giving me 12 and a half inches. So that means I have quarter of an inch in excess. So I'm going to measure down from the waistline quarter of an inch and using a French curve, I'm going to connect this point to the side seam like so. And here guys, this is my new waistline. Do make sure you close your dart before cutting out the pattern. So at this point, we're done with drafting the front pattern. So now you wanna go ahead and add in your seam allowance to this pattern before cutting it out. I came down two inches from the top of my paper before drawing the first horizontal line and I came in two inches from the side of my paper. Now from this point, I'm going to mark my back hip measurement, which is my hip circumference divided by four plus quarter of an inch, which I subtracted from the front hip. And then I do the same on the crotch line and connect both points together. Or you can just go ahead and divide your hip circumference into four. Next, I came in from this point with half of an inch. Now, this next step is very important because this creates the old silhouette of the jean foundation kind of pant. So I am going for a contoured fit, okay? So that means the total crotch level of both the front and the back should equal my thigh circumference plus at least one inch to one and quarter inches for a contoured fit 
or my thigh circumference plus one and a half inches to two inches for a relaxed fit. So what I'm going for is a contour fit. So that means I need to add one and quarter inches to my thigh circumference. But for the front crotch level, I already have 12 inches. So I'm going to subtract this 12 inches from my total crotch level measurement, which is 25 and quarter. And this gives me 13 and quarter. Now from this point, I'm going to mark out my back crotch level, which is 13 and quarter inches. From this point, I'm going to square out a diagonal line. Next, I'm going to mark the midpoint of this vertical line. This is just a guide for me. I'll tell you why. Now along this diagonal line, I'm going to mark one and three quarter inches. So you can mark one and three quarter inches for small sizes, and you can mark up to two inches for larger sizes, or you can go in between. Okay. Next, I'm going to come in from this point with one and three quarter inches, depending on your waist measurements, you can come in as much as two inches. From this point, I'm going to go upward, making sure it's on a 90 degree angle. I'm going to mark one inch. Next, I'm going to connect these four points together. Okay. So first of all, you want to draw a curve passing through the point on the diagonal line, straight down to the point on the middle of the vertical line, and then straight down to the point above above the waistline, but I found it hard to actually get a smooth curve. So I came down half of an inch from the point on the vertical line. So now I was able to get a smooth transition when drawing the curve and it worked out for me. Okay. So guys, you want to do everything possible to get a smooth curve. Next, you want to mark the midpoint between these two points. And then from this point, I'm going to draw my dart line, which is about three to four inches long. And then I squared this line above the waistline. Now from this point, I'm going to mark my back waist measurement, which is my waist circumference divided by four minus quarter of an inch, because we are more narrower at the back of our waist than at the front. The front seems to be fuller because of the stomach. And then you want to add in your dart width to this measurement. Okay. Now on both sides of the dart line, I'm going to mark my dart width of three quarter of an inch. Next to true the waistline, you need to equalize this dart by measuring all three dart leg and making the shorter one the same value as the longer one. Or you can just simply close your dart and redraw the waistline. Next, I'm going to connect these three points together to form the side seam. Next, I'm going to take the measurement of this two point and then mark the midpoint. And from this midpoint, I'm going to square a vertical line right across to the top as well as to the bottom of the pant. So this is the center line for the back of the pant. Now on the knee line, I'm just going to take what I have on the front knee line and add one inch to it, and then divide this value equally on both sides of the vertical line on the knee line. And I do the same thing on the M line. So whatever I have on the front M line, I added one inch and I distribute it equally on both sides of the vertical line on the M line. So right now, guys, the leg line of the pant is done, but we need to adjust the back crotch length, just like we did for the front crotch length. So I'm going to take the measurement of my pattern and this is giving me 13 and three quarter. So to get the back crotch length, you just simply need to subtract your front crotch length from the total crotch length. And this for me is 15 and three quarter, but I have 
on pattern 13 and 3 quarter that means my back crotch length is 2 inches short so what I'm going to do is to take the measurement from the original waistline to the crotch line and divide it into three equal parts and then I'm going to measure upward this amount from the crotch line and square out horizontal line right across this point this line is a balance point for me to adjust the crotch length now you want to slash through this point but you don't want to slash all the way out of the hip of the side seam you want to slash and just leave a tiny inch there next you need to take the total width of this line and keep that measurement in mind now you need to open up the pant like so until you get the accurate back crotch length okay so according to my measurement i need to open up two inches next i'm going to slip a piece of paper right through this point and tape this down in place now you want to blend this line like so okay and then take the measurement just to be sure that it's accurate now i need to take this original measurement because of what I cut out from the center back when I was blending it I have to take the measurement from this point and replace that portion that was cut out on the side seam right now using my French curve I'm going to redraw the side seam like so so by doing this we have no short edge even after adjusting the crotch length so guys we're done with drafting the back piece so at this point you want to go ahead and add your seam allowance and after adding your seam allowance you need to bring the front pattern and walk the front pattern on the side seam from the knee to the M just to make sure there is no shortage and nothing is in excess now you want to take the front at the hip line and match it together on the back hip line and walk it upward and when I did this I had a little shortage at my back so I feel that in and you want to do it also at the crotch and walk it down to the M like so so right now I'll go ahead and cut this on fabric and I also cut out a straight waistband which is simply a rectangle and I'm going to show you how to attach the simplest way to attach this waistband to the pant okay so initially I wanted to put a zipper fly but I decided to put the uh, zipper at the center back of the pant now for the band I'm going to add interfacing to give it structure and stability I've transferred my darts from my pattern to the fabric and now I'm going to go ahead and join the pieces together now for the center back I would advise that you add interfacing just to stabilize that point because that point is actually cut on bias so you're going to experience some amount of stretch so to stabilize that center back please add an interfacing so i used sd and you can do the same for the center front as well but the center back is more important now i'm going to join the two front pieces together like so and then i'm going to do the same for the back but for the back because i'm adding a zipper i'm just going to run a loose stitch on the back now i'm going to bring the back and the front and join it together at a crotch like so so i would advise you pin the two pieces together before taking it to the sewing machine and at some point you might need to stretch the fabric when sewing so you don't have one getting longer than the other when you sew so after joining the pieces together i tested the pants and i observed that my center back extended above my natural waistline so i went back to take the crotch length measurement and it's giving me 17 inches but my original crotch length measurement at the back supposed to be 16 and quarter inches including the waist seam allowance so what i'm going to do now is to take out the excess Next, I'm going to mark down the three quarter inch excess which I have, and then I'm going to connect it like so to zero point at the side seam. 
and then I'm going to cut it off. And when I tested it again, it sits perfectly on my natural waistline. Now for the band, you need to add in interfacing. So I use SD for the band and because I want my trouser, including the band to sit at least quarter of an inch above my natural waistline, I'm going to drop down the waist with one inch and cut this portion off. But if you want your pant to sit above your waistline, your band width should not be more than one and quarter to one and a half inches. Okay. So here is the dimension of my band. The band width is four inches and the length is my waist circumference plus four inches. So I went ahead and I added interfacing to the band and I ironed it flat. So right now I'm going to join the band with right side facing right side of the pant, and then I'm going to attach it with half inch seam allowance. So once this is done, you want to press your, the seam open. When you press the seam open, you want to press the seam allowance toward the band. So after pressing it, you want to take your tape and measure out the width of your band. So I'm going for one and quarter inches. And as I measure, I'll pin this in place all to the end of the band. And then I'm going to give this a good press, which I've already done. So at this point, we're going to do what I call stitch in the ditch to finish off this band. So which is basically you dropping your needle right in the middle of this seam. So when you sew like this, it's going to conceal your thread on the right side. Okay. So your thread will not be visible. So I'm going to carefully drop my needle right in the middle of the seam and gently and carefully sew the band. This is what the band is looking right now. You can see how neat it is on the front and you cannot even find the thread on top of the band. Okay. Because it's eating in the seam and this is what it looks like on the back. So right now I need to trim this seam allowance into half of an inch. So I'll go ahead and trim off this allowance to half of an inch. And once this is done, I'll take it to my seizure and, and then finish off the raw edge. And guys, this is what the band looks like right now. So I'll be using an invisible zipper for this pant. So I'll go ahead and fix the zipper and come back to show you what a pant looks like. It is perfect. It fits like a glove. I love every stitch. I love every inch of it is just perfect. So guys, I hope you find this video helpful. If you do remember to leave a comment, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye bye. Hey. Man, I like my girls, short and sexy, with a fine ass face, looking fancy, and attractive classy like a car ease, but like a band she make me wanna drop this. Who can I hop in? Never hop out. She say you want this? Mm, not now. But you know what they say now is the time, baby. Hi, I'm the truth. All these niggas they be lying. Yeah, if you got a problem, I'm the method man. Practically, I'm the practical with this method man. Can't promise I'll be a better man, but I'll try. So let me just let you know that I got what you need in A different kind of feeling, deeper than the Pacific Hey, I already got two tickets when you're ready, let's fly Would you let me call, would you let me text you?